But unless you're really hitting the 0.1% or even 0.01%, you are almost certainly not going to be making money from merch and it will be a complete waste of your time, effort and money. So I wanted to do a video. I've been wanting to do this video for a while now about why merch is pretty much a complete waste of time, effort and focus and probably motivation for the vast majority. And I'm talking probably 99.9% .9 of streamers out there. So hi, I'm Machine Dana. I hope you're doing really, really well. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the video. <sighs> I've got quite a lot of experience in supply chain and logistics and e-commerce. I've worked for a couple of different software companies, one of which in particular, we worked very closely with some very large YouTubers and social media people. I held meetings with loads of these higher ups and also some of the social media people themselves. And I'm talking people with millions and millions of subscribers on YouTube here. I'm not just talking about somebody with 10,000 followers or 5,000 followers or even like 50,000 followers. These are really, really big people and some of these people even at the lower end had like half a million to a million subscribers and they just couldn't make merch work they couldn't make it work a combination of different factors meant that they just weren't able to make a profit from merch but also it represented just one really big waste of time for them just very quickly in terms of credibility here i was the guy that was negotiating the contracts making the sale with them and then having follow-up project planning with them and helping on board these clients i saw the sales figures over the course of many many weeks and the reason why that was important is because it affected my own commission the number of sales that they made because the larger the client that i brought on board the more money i would get as a commission for the sale that i'd made for the sale and the services that this company that I used to work for for five or six years used to provide was a website, a back-end e-commerce management system for inventory and stock levels and supply chain, and then of course the actual storage, the picking and the packing of those goods globally. So I saw a great amount of detail about many different social media people, even people that were pretty sizable in clout. There were a few rare instances where clearly merch was definitely worthwhile, and I'll go into some of the detail about that in this video. So the main focus of this video is going to be why it's a waste of time for 99.9% .9 of streamers out there and why you should be focusing your time on other or high value things. Just don't waste your time on merch until you are ready for it or if you are one of the exceptions that I'll mention towards the back end of the video. As always, if you find this useful, do hit the like, hit the subscribe button and feel free to check me out at twitch.tv forward slash machine Dana and let's do this. So first, a little bit about merch. Companies like Streamlabs and Stream Elements have made it incredibly easy for you to be able to start selling merch. They handle the whole process end to end, including physical designing of the product, the physical manufacture, and then of course the logistics off the backside of that, including shipping worldwide to people, handling the payments, everything. And you just basically upload some logos to a mug and things like that. First, I wanted to talk about why that approach anyway is bad. On the one hand, it's very, very convenient but you've got a very small amount of control, if any control over your whole supply chain at that point. You don't receive the payments into your merchant payment systems. You don't understand the stock levels. You don't understand the supply chain issues that are going to be had. You don't understand necessarily which products are doing well or not and why. You may not even see the stock before it gets sent to a customer. Okay, it's massively convenient, but the thing is if you're large enough or successful enough to actually run merch viably and in a way that's going to make any kind of difference and be worth your time, it's worth you setting up the merch yourself and doing it and overseeing everything. And in particular, overseeing two key things. First of all, the designing of the products. And the second thing, understanding any issues that are being had with the supply chain. For example, any problem territories. Ultimately, it's going to be you whose reputation and whose brand's damaged when the supply chain doesn't go well and people don't get their goods either on time or if they get them damaged or maybe they don't get them at all. So companies like Streamlabs and Stream Elements, it's it's literally a drag and drop and all of a sudden they can just create a web page for you and you're paying a minimum amount of cost for let's say a Streamlabs Prime subscription to be able to unlock the ability to do that. Even though they say it's free, it often absolutely is not free. You're paying a subscription to access that service. It's behind a paywall. It's not free. Secondly, obviously Streamlabs and Stream Elements are not doing this for the fun of it. They're profiting off the back of your hard work. They're taking some of the profit margin out of your products because they're the guys that are buying the product 
products and selling the products and then giving you whatever's left over at the end of it, which often won't be a lot in terms of the percentage. You're probably talking 10, 20, at the most 30% of the overall. And typically with merch, you should be expected to earn a lot more profit than 10 or 20%. Take that from me because merch can be very cheap to manufacture if it's done well. I want to tell you about a couple of different YouTubers that I experienced going through the sales process with closing a service contract with setting up integrations with all of their websites, web stores for merch, and then them realizing that it didn't work out and some of the lessons that were learned from this. I'm not going to name who some of these people were, but I will name some of the more successful ones that we did work with. Amazing Phil and Dan is not on fire were two people that we worked with. They collectively had something like 10 to 12 million followers, and it was only when they were getting to that level that it was starting starting to be successful. The smaller YouTubers talking at the level at half a million to a million subscribers, merch just didn't really sell. And, and without going into a hell of a lot of detail, they probably weren't even making enough money to cover the service fees and to make a profit, let alone any kind of substantial profit, which when you take into account process of creating products, delivering those products and the potential brand damage that that would have done to them, should that merch process had not gone very well. For example, if the product was bad or if the logistics system for that was, was bad, obviously that is a risk in itself, it simply wasn't worth it for some of these mid-end YouTubers. And when I talk about low to mid-end, I am talking half a million to a million subscribers. Now, there are some exceptions to the rule. And again, I'll go into these later in the video. But unless you're really hitting the 0.1% or even 0.01%, you are almost certainly not going to be making money from merch. And it will be a complete waste of your time, effort, and money. So, okay, I understand that some people want to have merch more from like a perception point of view and brand and for it to look good. If you're doing merch purely for the sake of having a brand and building the brand, it can start to make some sense as long as you're willing to accept that you probably will not be making money from this. It is a cost to your entity, a cost to your business, and it's more than likely going to cost you a lot more money than it will bring in. Even if you've got 10 to 50,000 followers on Twitch and maybe you're getting 500 to 1,000 concurrent viewers, I guarantee that you're unlikely to sell more than 50 to 100 units of stock to your fans. And if you're happy with that, bear in mind you won't make a profit on that, then that's fine. But most people are probably going to be in this for a profit and doing this for the money. And I understand that people see this as like a romanticized extra product stream. It isn't an extra product stream until you are a very big YouTuber or a very big TikToker or a very big Twitch person. And even if you are a very large social media influencer, even then there's no guarantees that you'll make profit with merch. And that's because you can execute merch very badly. You can choose the wrong products. You choose the right products, but they're just really bad quality, you can choose the right products at the right quality and totally screw up the supply chain and the people that are buying the products have really turned off you and you get a reputation for not being able to supply the products at all or in time. So even if you can get the first two elements right, you're still not guaranteed to get the third element right. And that's if you can even get the volume required to make this a viable thing to do. I watched how multiple YouTubers would come into the business via the agency that we were working with. We would handle end to end everything that they were doing and at the end of the month, they were coming out with not even hundreds of pounds in profit. They were at a loss because of the service fees. They were at a loss because of the cost of the product and designing and delivering that product. The problem is unless you've experienced merch and you know how it works from the inside, you don't really know what those numbers would look like. If you've got half a million subscribers on YouTube, let's say you've got 200,000 followers on Twitch, it's a fair assumption to say to yourself, I'm probably going to be able to make money from this via merch by selling products to that number of people. But the thing is, there's only a small, tiny fraction of people that will hit the buy button. Even if you've got the most optimized web shop, and even if you sell into all the different territories, there's still only going to be perhaps 1% of your viewership that will actually buy products from you. Now, unless you're going down the route of allowing someone like Streamlabs or Stream Elements to control fully your supply chain and the quality of the product and all of that stuff, and including the payments and when you get paid, which is a massive amount of control to give away to a third party company that you don't even have direct contact with, then basically you're in a situation where you're doing it on your own and it's extremely difficult to get any traction on this and it will waste a hell of a lot of your time. Now, just for a second, let's talk about time and the hourly rate. If you're spending, for example, 15 minutes per order to collate it, print the labels, get it all together, package the product, get it to the postal service, you know, organize the postage labels, and then also all the customer service off the back of that, the reality is what you think might be a 15 minutes or even five minutes per order probably will 
turn into more like half an hour per order when you then also take into consideration sourcing products, testing products, designing products, and all the other stuff that goes along with it. So you've got two real choices here. Have an enormous amount of time wasted per order in creating this entity that you can at least have control over, which again, is only really worthwhile doing if you're into the millions of followers and subscribers, or you're letting another company take control. The reality is that company doesn't really care about you. They care about profit. Even if you're a medium-sized streamer with say a thousand concurrent viewers and maybe a hundred thousand followers, you're still just a drop in the ocean to these very big companies. Streamlabs, we know, was bought for 94 million by Logitech. That company's probably worth a couple of hundred million by now. Similar thing with Stream Elements, probably worth a couple of hundred million. You're a tiny little dot on the radar. You're probably not even on the radar for them. So when you have problems with their service, you're probably not going to be able to get through to speak to someone, let alone get any kind of resolution. All the while, your brand will be getting damaged by those companies. I had a lot of experience working with brands whenever they had problems because some of these problems are just part and parcel of the logistics and supply chain market and e-commerce in general. It's a big shock to the system when you realize that it's not always as straightforward as you think. Orders will go missing. You will have product defects. You will have returns to deal with. You'll have unhappy customers. You'll have people that will write bad reviews. These are all things that just happen. And this is all thing that will absorb more and more of your time and more to the point, more of your motivation if it's not done well. I did say there were a couple of different exceptions where doing merch probably is worthwhile. I think the first and biggest exception for a small streamer, if you don't care about the money side of it at all, and you simply want to have some clothing that you can give to your, you know, 10 or 20 really, really key viewers or people that you know would love to have your products. If you're doing it as a loss, or maybe you're doing it as a giveaway and you're happy to just absorb that as a loss for the purpose of creating some hype and just to improve the branding of your entity. But the expectation there is definitely not a money expectation. And again, even with that, you're still potentially going to have some issues with the quality of the product and then some supply chain issues and things going missing and so on and so forth. So it still could be quite painful, even if you're only buying 50 or 100 units of stock. Another exception is there are a very small number of really good third party fulfillment companies that might be able to help you and don't require require a lot of commitment in terms of the contract size and the money that you've got to pay for them, which means you could get some product into these companies relatively easy and they could take away 70 or 80% of the pain. But even with that, really, you're still only going to be left with a situation where you probably have to be at a certain level to justify the cost of that. Even at that level, you're still probably going to be paying 250 or 500 pounds per month because any less than that, and it's simply not going to be worthwhile the third party fulfillment company to even engage with you. So there are ways to do it, maybe when you're the medium to large larger size streamer where you can make it work from a service point of view and it'd be not quite as painful. But again, the expectation of profit even with that should be fairly low. The final exception is if you are genuinely a very large streamer or a very large YouTuber and you've got a lot of highly engaged fans and if you're getting like hundreds or thousands of requests for merch, that might be a situation where you want to consider doing maybe a limited run of high quality gear rather than a sort of massive range of products and perhaps the quality won't be very high. So at this point, even when you are a larger streamer or a larger influencer, I'd still recommend that you consider the types of products that you release as merch. I wouldn't recommend doing the basic stuff like mugs and pens and stuff like that, because although they are easy to handle, source and send out and ship and all the rest of it, it's very much like a me too product and everyone kind of does the same thing. So there you go. Hopefully I've given you a little bit of insight from the inside of what it's like to actually handle merch. I realize this is quite a negative video and I don't like doing negative videos, but I wanted to share my own experiences to really high value experiences in this situation when we're talking about merch and also the integration of different websites into an e-commerce store. And of course, the reputational branding damage that that can potentially do if you get it wrong. As always, if you found it useful, hit the like, feel free to subscribe to the channel and have a wonderful day.